Well, joining us here in studio now is Tamar Karmut. He's an assistant professor of public policy at the Doha Institute for Graduate Studies. Good to have you with us. So many moving parts at the moment. Mm -hmm. So let's just start off with the situation in the Middle East as we see it right now. It seems to be sort of not just a military holding pattern, but a diplomatic holding pattern in what's going on. You know, the strikes uh, of Israel into Iran, Iran's general silence mm -hmm. over what happened or didn't happen on their territory. How do you sort of read this as the G7 finish off their meeting and most probably the focus will head to the US and Security Council at some stage in, in the week? Mm -hmm. uh, Sohail, I mean, I think militarily, I think we're out of the woods now. I mean, uh, uh, looking at the response, Israel's response in Iran uh, and uh, how the Iran has underplayed the Israeli attack on Iran. Uh, I think this round of direct military confrontation is mm -hmm. over now. We're back to the previous uh, rules of engagement, proxy warfare. Mm -hmm. And we'll see this happening in Lebanon today. Again, Hezbollah is back shooting a few rockets on Israel. And then we'll see the Israelis hitting on Iraq. And then maybe the Houthis will be involved. As long as the original conflict, the, the key conflict in Gaza is still ongoing. Mm -hmm. But uh, the possibility of another direct confrontation between Iran and Israel, I think it's over. Uh, we can see a sense of relief among allies, among other countries. Even the Iranians themselves, I don't think they have showed any interest to retaliate uh, by downplaying what happened uh, when it comes to the Israeli attack on Iran. So we've seen these attacks now happen in Iraq, and one wonders why the focus would be there. Is it that perhaps Israel wants to perhaps de-escalate itself or remove itself from any sort of attack in Syria? Because that's like poking a, a, a sleeping bear, really, isn't it, right now? Uh, y yes, of course. I mean, and, 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 and Israel has to continue its, I mean, I mean it's, all, it's, it's, its familiar discourse by countering Iran's influence in the region and keep hitting on Iran's allies everywhere, starting from Lebanon, Syria, Iraq. So this is back to uh, the, 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 what we have known before, what we have known before, the usual tactics Israel have, have been using to counter Iran's influence. So, so there is nothing new here. But I think what's most important is that there is a great sense of relief that a direct confrontation, a continuation of a direct confront confrontation between Iran and Israel is over now. And, but the problem is Gaza again, because I think now the center of attention is again uh, going back to Gaza with an over, uh, uh, I mean, ex uh, an expectation that there will be a military operation in Rafah. Mm. And I think uh, the discussions are now focused on how. The house and uh, and uh, I, I think there is a serious or sincere uh, uh, focus from the U.S. that they don't want a similar military conduct like what happened. No, you say you, you say how, and yet it's interesting, isn't mm -hmm. it, that we've had the German and the British foreign ministers sitting down with the Israeli prime minister and basically saying, "Don't go into Rafa." We know this this sort of conversation is happening. America is warning against it right now. And yet we've also seen Israel completely ignore its so-called allies, inverted commas, when it, when it wants to launch these operations. Mm -hmm. what, is the, what are the chances that Israel would really ignore their allies, even, even as the US is sending more and more munitions to Tel Aviv? So here's the thing, Soil. I don't think that they have a clear red line or like a clear no from the allies. I mean, we have here... Are there, Blink any, are there any red lines, uh, though, uh, left? No, 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 of course. But we have... Blinken has uh, expressed his concerns over a major military operation without uh, having to deal with the 1.2 million refugees in, in Rafah. So as if he's greening an, a military operation, but under certain conditions that these populations have to be dealt with, relocated back to the north, whatever it is. So I think now they're in the midst of this. They don't want an immediate attack on Rafah uh, as it stands now with all the people stuck in the south and the humanitarian disasters there. So I don't see a red no. There are no red no's. As you have said rightfully, we have, see, we have heard many red lines and many big no's from the beginning of this war. And again, Netanyahu continues with his war conduct. So he's, of course, he's, he's, he's above the, 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 the international system. He's, He's even able to embarrass his allies, and they know that he's going to continue. But the thing is on putting brakes on him, constraining his and restraining his response. That's what they're doing now by supplying ammunition and, and support to him, military support, financial support. And while this continues, whether it's from uh, the US or from European allies, we see the continued disconnect between politicians and civil society, you know, university students in the US being arrested mm -hmm. for demonstrating, a social media um, network having its employees sacked for a, a sit-in in their offices, I think it was Google. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and 
daily or weekly weekend protests in major capitals, especially in the United Kingdom mm -hmm. and in Germany and in Paris. I mean, this is continuing. It's not, it's not stopping. And there is this disconnect, is there not? Correct, so it's a great point. And yes, there is, there is this huge awakening uh, um, among the societies in the West, in the US, in the UK, worldwide. There's a huge sympathy and support for the Palestinian cause. Has this been materialized into a political action? Not yet, but uh, we have to watch for the next elections. I mean, Europe is... Uh, On the verge, yeah. Exactly. The US is in a couple of months, yeah. you know, and then we have European elections in major European capitals, starting from Germany, UK, I mean, name it. So we'll see how this public opinion or how this awakening will be, yeah. uh, will, will, will affect these uh, political outcomes in the elections. I mean, so they'll have to vote and we have to see how, to, how would this materialise. Well, it's a very quiet weekend at the moment until they all wake up uh, in Europe. And of course, we'll continue to unpick it. Tamar Kamut, thank you. My pleasure.